सो हे स्टूडेंट्स गुड इवनिंग इच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू वेलकम बैक टू दीक्षा विदान टू नाइन्थ एंड टेंथ इंग्लिश दिस बस फराज एम योर बायोलॉजी मास्टर टीचर नाउ बिफोर वी स्टार्ट एनी थिंग क्विकली लेट मी नो इन द चैट इफ माई वॉइस इज ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड द प्रेजेंटेशन बिहाइंड मी इज विजिबल टू इच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू सो इन टूडेज वीडियो विल बी डूइंग द एंटायर चैप्टर दैट इज हेरिटी चैप्टर इन वन शॉर्ट आई विल बी टीचिंग यू अ बेसिक टर्म्स इन द स्टार्टिंग आफ्टर द बेसिक टर्मिनोलॉजीज we will be doing the mono hybrid cross as well as the di hybrid cross so with that being said let's not waste any time and let's get to the chapter now before we start i want every one of you to hit the like hit the like share the video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel okay so heredity chapter is your biology club chapter chapter number 9 now before you understand the chapter there are few basic requirements the few basic requirements are the terminologies so without understanding the basic terminologies this chapter becomes very extremely difficult to understand for example what is the meaning of genetics first yes what is the meaning of genetics what is the meaning of heredity what is the meaning of inheritance what is the meaning of you know chromosomes so before understanding all these terminologies the chapter becomes very difficult so we are going to start from the basic even if you do not know a single word from this chapter you should be able to understand this chapter that is my aim today so with that being said let's watch let's start today's session so first definition here is the genetics now students this chapter the heredity chapter actually belongs to a particular you know section of biology so if you broadly know the division of biology is into botany and zoology but apart from botany and zoology there are other different types of fields such as your microbiology bio biochemistry molecular biology cell biology now one such field of science called as genetics genetics is a branch of biology involved with the study of heredity so this is a field where we understand and you know find relations about heredity but what is the meaning of heredity here anyone in the chat who can tell me yes heredity is the transmission of characters from parent to the offspring yes but look at this definition here what is the meaning of inheritance inheritance is the process by which a character yes a process by which character are passed from parent to the progeny the meaning of progeny here is also the offspring also called as offspring so we are transferring certain characters from parent to the offspring that is called as heredity a quick example see here can you see this is a obviously a golden retriever yes golden retriever this is a golden this is a much more whiter the character is transferred from the parent to the offspring here that is the fur color the color of the fur is transferred from the parent to the offspring here that is nothing but inheritance that is nothing but inheritance it is the basis of the heredity it is the basis of heredity but then what is the meaning of variation students in the chapter reproduction in organisms that is how do organisms reproduce i spoke about certain inbuilt variations that is during the copying of dna there can be certain errors because of the certain errors there can be certain variation and also during sexual reproduction because there is a fusion of gametes that is two genetic material coming together because of that there could be variations but what is this variation i'm talking here variations are nothing but changes they are nothing but changes so variation is the degree by which a progeny differs that is a degree by which parent and offspring are different because all of you know parent and offspring are not exactly alike yes we are not copy paste right you cannot be just like your parent you cannot be just like your mother right you cannot be a copy paste there might be certain similarities and differences but those differences right those differences are nothing but variations some of you say right your mother your mother has say you have your same nose as your mother you have same eyes as your father those are similarities but there are also certain differences now those differences are variation variation is a degree by which a progeny differs from the parent and what is the main cause of variation the main cause of variation is nothing but the sexual reproduction yes the main cause of variation is sexual reproduction why because sexual reproduction because in sexual reproduction there is fusion of gametes now what about amoeba what about 
you know, prokaryotes. What about single-celled organisms? Do they also so show such a wide variation? Obviously not. Because all of us know, if you have attended my class, that is sexual reproduction of, you know, in the how do organisms reproduce? There I told you, in the case of asexual reproduction, there are very less variation. That is, organisms like bacteria and amoeba undergo asexual reproduction and they show minimum variation. Clear? They show minimum variation. Hence, variations are typical in sexual reproducing organisms. Why? Because there is a fusion of two different gametes. Clear? Now, but next understand the next concept. What is this DNA? What is this DNA? Can Tarun tell me? Can anyone in the chat tell me? What is a DNA? Now, for your class, you know, 10th, I'll be telling you a basic definition of DNA. DNA is nothing but deoxyribonucleic acid. That is the full form of DNA. But if someone asks you, what is a DNA? You do not tell the difference. You do not tell the entire full form. You need to tell DNA is actually the genetic material, also called as the heredity material. The blueprint, right? The, how your body is formed. For example, you might have two hands, you know, uh, and one nose, two eyes, two ears. Now, all of this is because of the blueprint inside your body. The blueprint inside your body is, is nothing but the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. It is a nucleic acid. Clear? But where is this DNA stored inside? Where is the DNA? Yes, it contains the inheritance material. It also contains the blueprint. It contains every single thing which is required for formation of an organism. But where do you find the DNA? Right? Simple question. Where do you find DNA? Do you find DNA in the hand? Do you find DNA in the hair? Do you find DNA in the eyes? Where do you find DNA? DNA is everywhere. That is, DNA is found in almost all the cell. If you look inside a cell, if you open a cell, Inside the cell, there is something called as nucleus. And inside the nucleus, we can find the DNA. But are there any other sites where DNA can be found apart from nucleus? The answer is yes. Even in the case of mitochondria, even in the case of chloroplast, they also have their own DNA. Remember that point. Your mitochondria as well as chloroplast also has the DNA. But the main chunk of DNA is found inside the nucleus. Clear? Now, Let's understand what is chromatin. Now I told you, the DNA is packed by a special protein called as histone protein to form the chromatin. Chromatin is actually a loose, thin, thread-like structure. That is, a complete thread of DNA is called as a chromatin. That is, DNA plus, DNA plus a certain protein called as histone protein, called as histone protein makes up the chromatin makes up the chromatin. A chromatin further condenses to form the chromosome. That is very important. Because the reason I'm teaching you what is chromatin because I want you to understand what is a chromosome. Chromosome is nothing but a complete condensation of chromatin. So we have the DNA. DNA plus the histone protein is giving you the chromatin. When the chromatin gets condensed completely, that forms the chromosome. First is the DNA plus histone protein provides chromatin and chromatin gets completely condensed that is called as a chromosome. Clear? Basic definitions. Then what is a chromosome? Chromosomes are tightly coiled structures composed of DNA. Tightly coiled structures. Of what? Of chromatin. Of the chromatin. Clear? Now, what is a genome? What is a genome? You might be using these words very regularly in this chapter. Genotype, phenotype. Then, But what is a genome? Genome is nothing but a complete set of genetic information. The complete genetic information inside an organism is called as genome. Clear? Then what is genes then? All of us know what is genes. It is not the genes which you wear. Not that genes. What is this G-E-N-E-S? What is this genes? Now the, I'll tell you the basic definition of genes. That is all you need to remember. The basic definition of genes is nothing but genes is actually a small segment of DNA. What is a gene? Gene is a small segment of DNA. 
So if I take this is a long DNA and if you cut this part here, small segment of DNA is called as a gene. Small segment of a DNA is called as a gene. Then what is an allele? So how many of you know what is twins? We have twins which look like each other, identical twins. Yes, twins are basically two type of organ, two type of humans which look alike. Just like the twins, we have something called as the allele. What is an allele? Allele is nothing but alternative twin of a gene. So one gene actually has a twin brother or a twin sister. That is alternative form of a gene. So one gene has two different paths. So one allele, second allele. Clear? So one gene will have two different parts that is called as an allele. So what is an allele students? Can anyone tell me in the chat? Repeat after me. Allele is nothing but sir. Allele is a alternative form of a gene. All, allele is a twin brother of a gene. Clear? Now they occur in pair. Very important. That is for example, there are two alleles here. So capital A, small a. They will appear together. They will appear always in pair. Clear? Allele is inherited in the form of from each parent. Allele is inherited from each parent. The next concept from here onwards, we are actually building towards the chapter now. Now, what is the meaning of homozygous and heterozygous? Listen to me very carefully. Now, all of you know the meaning of allele is alternative form of a gene. Yes, sir. Allele is an alternative form of a gene. When the two alleles look completely same to same. That is, you cannot tell differentiate between them. Just like the identical twins. You know, identical twins, they look completely alike, right? Both the boys will look same. Both the girls will look same to same. That is your homozygous. When both the alleles look exactly the same. That is the basic definition. That is, organisms with identical or similar alleles of a particular character is called as homozygous. For example, capital T and capital T or small t or small t. Do they look alike? Both are capital, both are small case. That is when they look completely alike, when the two alleles are same, that is called as homozygous. Identical or similar alleles. Now what about heterozygous? Heter heterozygous are like the twins which do not look alike. One twin, they are called twins for namesake, but they do not look alike. They are quite twin, they are called twin for just for the namesake. For example, we have a heterozygous example is capital T and small t. Do they look alike? They don't look alike, but they are also an allele that is called as heterozygous condition. This is a heterozygous condition. Someone is asking me, sir, can you please explain allele once again? Why not? Listen to me very carefully. You know twins, right? All of you know twins. What are twins? Twins are nothing but uh, humans which look completely same to same. Yes, they are present in a pair. Just like the twins, just like the twins, inside your body, a gene will have a twin brother. A gene will have a twin brother. So one gene has two different forms. One gene has two different forms. So one allele is here, there will be one more allele. So one gene has two different forms. That is alternative form of a gene. So one gene has how many parts? One gene has two different parts. For example, allele 1 and allele 2. Clear? They are identical to each other. Yes, if they are identical, uh, if the, there are two forms. Now if the two twins are completely identical, that is called as homozygous. And if the twins are not identical to each other, for example, we have one capital and one small here. Do they look alike? No, sir. That is why they are called as what? Heterozygous. That is why they are called as heterozygous. Can you see this? Capital, small by small by, capital capital by. They are called as homozygous. Same to same. But there is one stupid person here. There is one capital Y and small y. Capital Y and small y. This is called as heterozygous. Capital Y, small y. Clear? Amazing. Now, can we solve some questions? Can we solve some questions based on what we learned? Here, the first question is here. The difference in characters among the individuals of a species is called as. 
if a species has certain changes. I will be explaining loss of pendles in today's video towards the end of the session. Okay, towards the end of the session, we will completely cover all the three laws that is, law of dominance, law of segregation, law of independent assortment. All three of them I will be teaching you. Along with that, I will also be teaching you how to solve questions based on that. Okay, this is called as variation. This is called as variation that is, differences in species. Next question the composite. The composite of an organism's observable character is called as. If an organism's observable character is called as. I have not thought of this. I want to see how many of you know this answer. The observable characters of an organism is called as phenotype. It's called as what? Phenotype. For example, I have two hands. I have two eyes, one nose, one mouth, two ears. All of these are morphologically visible characters. For example, you can look at an organism and tell this is a dog because it has a tail, two ears, one long nose. That is called as phenotype properties or phenotype. Now, what is a genotype? Genotype is the genetic property. For example, we have 46 chromosomes. That is our genotype. That is genotype is the inside one that is the related to the genes. Genotype is related to the genes. Now, when different alleles of a same gene are present together, different alleles, when different alleles are present together in the same gene are, is called as what? What is this called? When the two different alleles are present together, that is called as your heterozygous condition. When the two alleles are same, that is called as homozygous. When the two alleles are completely different, that is called as heterozygous. Example was what? Capital T small t or capital Y small y, capital A small a, capital B small b. Two different alleles are present together. Clear? Now what is homozygous? Homozygous when the two alleles are exactly same to same. Clear? Now, if you have understood till now all the concepts, Subscribe to the channel right now because next I'll be teaching you what is the difference between a character and a trait. A character and a trait very important. Please listen to me very carefully now. All ears, listen to me. Now students, what is a character? Sir, why don't you appreciate? I, I am reading your answers, Meenakshi. Don't worry, I am reading the answers. The thing is, answers are coming very late. There is a small lag here. Answers are not coming uh, like on pro point. They are coming late. All of you are answering correct only. See, if you answer wrong, then I will tell you are wrong because your answering is correct. Now, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very, very carefully. What is the difference between a character and a trait? Okay. Character, I will give you an example. Listen to the example. Character is like height, color. That is a character. Now, height can be tall and dwarf. Yes. Color can be red, blue, green. The height and color is called as a character. Height and a height of a plant. Color of a plant. Color of this color. Tall, short. That is called as a trait. That is called as a trait. With the help of example, I am teaching you. But now, let's look at the definition. Look at the definition now. What is the character? Character is used for phenotypic property of an individual. Yes? Like, no, no. Character is like hair color. Yes, character is like a hair color. But is it red color hair, white color hair, or gray color hair? That is a trait. That is a trait. Okay? Now, character is used for phenotypic property of an individual. Yes? I can tell you, you are so tall. So, your, your height is so much. Right? You have beautiful, uh, you know, you have color, your eye color is nice. That is a character. Is you, that is height and color is a character. But if it is tall or is it short, that is a trait is an inheritable character. This is the line I am telling you. Trait is an inheritable character. That means we can inherit the trait from the parent to the offspring. Remember this. Someone says that, all of you heard, you are tall just like your dad. They say that, right, you are so tall just like your dad. 
that is you inherited the trait you inherited the trait of being the tallness that is a trait so trait is a inherited character such as tall dwarf purple white color of a flower all of these are traits any confusion you can ask me right right now minakshi tarun all of you ask me the doubt right now if you have any confusion between what is a character what is a trait okay clear and remember trait is always specific trait is always very very specific and trait can be inherited trait can be inherited for example you inherit the eyes color color of your eyes from the parents brown color eyes blue color eyes you inherit the trait okay yes trait is a modified form of a character or a specific character clear now what is a cross what is the meaning of a cross simple definition what is a cross a genetic cross is the purposeful mating of two individuals resulting in the production of an offspring so we have two different you know plants here they undergo mating and we result a offspring this is called as a cross then we have something called as dominant and recessive allele now this is very important now listen to me very carefully now i told you previously i told you i told you right previously there are two forms of a gene right one gene has two forms for example this gene is for tallness it has two different alleles here capital t allele capital t allele again here also we have capital t and capital t so small t and small t now quickly tell me in the chat quickly tell me in the chat is this homozygous or is this heterozygous tell me in the chat right now is this homozygous or is this heterozygous obviously sir both the alleles are same to same i will call it homozygous in nature so this is homozygous in nature now what about this can you see the offspring offspring is capital t small t what about this this is a heterozygous condition sir what about mating mating means when you transfer the pollen grains you know pollination pollination is nothing but the fertilization fertilization is mating mating is nothing but fertilization that is the fusion between the gametes is called as mating okay now what about this this right here is a heterozygous condition now in this heterozygous condition we have two different alleles yes we have two different alleles now in this two different alleles only one allele will always express in this between these two alleles only one allele will completely express itself there are two people only one person is very talkative he will only talk all the time he will not the, he will not let other person talk at all very talkative person that very talkative person the person who will always show off the person who always shows off is called as dominant allele the show off is called as what dominant allele in this capital t will capital t will show off capital t will express itself and this capital t here is dominant allele and when this dominant allele is expressing when this dominant allele is talking the small allele will simply sit will not talk that is called as a recessive allele that is called as a recessive allele that is in a pair of alleles the one which is always expressed the one which is always talking the one which is always showing off that is called as a dominant allele clear the allele that does not express a phenotype if the dominant allele is present whenever the dominant allele is talking when the dominant allele is showing off the one simply sitting in a corner who is not talking at all zip mouth aram sitting it is not expressing at all that is called as your recessive allele that is small t here that is the small t here it is given the diagram capital t represents the dominant and small t represents the recessive always okay clear amazing now what is a locus what is a locus locus is nothing but if this is a chromosome in this chromosome a fixed position a fixed position of a, in a chromosome that occupies by a certain gene is or an allele is called as a locus so on this particular loci one particular gene will take one particular gene will be present here 
here we'll have one particular allele here and that will express itself that is called as a locus locus is a fixed position of a gene on the chromosome clear now now we are coming to your loss one by one slowly will come slowly let's build up the chapter let's build up the hype right what is f1 and f2 generation now now when we cross the two parents for example we have the two different parents here when the two different parents cross the first generation which is resultant the first generation which is coming out also called as first filial generation that is your f1 so f1 the first filial generation is obtained by crossing two different parents when you cross two different parents we obtain the f1 generation but then how do we obtain the f2 generation f2 generation is obtained by self crossing the f1 generation the second or second filial generation is obtained by selfing the individuals in the f1 generation now this two will cross if what if you are crossing these two right when you cross the f1 generation we obtain the f2 generation clear so f2 generation is obtained by crossing self crossing of f1 generation cross this cross this clear now again some questions so I'll solve some questions we'll build up the chapter the f2 generation is is a produ produced by the result of how do we obtain the f2 generation quickly tell me in the chat i'll give you 10 seconds 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 one times up that is self pollination of f1 individuals that is self crossing of f1 generation uh, gives us f2 generation self crossing of f1 gives f2 generation next question alleles that cannot express itself in the presence of another allele is called as for example there is one allele that one allele is no, not able to express at all when other allele is present that is called as your recessive allele that is called as recessive allele because recessive allele cannot express when dominant allele is present clear now we come to the mendel experiment now we come to the mendelian experiment can we start a quick red hearts in the chat and we will start the mendelian experiment now can we start awesome 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 so who was this mendel first of all before we go to the mendel experiments i want everyone to understand who is mendel gregor mendel was a scientist he was actually a mathematician first later on he became a biologist and a botanist that is gregor mendel conducted hybridization experiments on a garden pea so he conducted all his experiments that is mono hybrid cross di hybrid cross every single one of them on a garden pea and the scientific name the scientific name of garden pea is pisum sativum pisum sativum and students when you writing in your paper pisum sativum please underline this see can you see now this is in italics now this is in italics but when you writing in your paper please underline this and always remember the first is always capital the second letter is always small the first one is always capital second one is always small now he gave the law of inheritance he is also known as the father of genetics now this can also be asked as a question what are the different characters mendel worked on yes mendel conducted artificial pollination what is artificial pollination in artificial pollination we take the anther we take the pollen grains and you uh, sprinkle it over the stigma that is artificial pollination using true breeding lines he selected 14 true breeding pea plants varieties as seven pairs so in total in total he in conclude he included seven different characters that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so he included how many characters mendel included seven different characters and how many traits 14 traits clear that is shape of the seed color of the seed color of the pod shape of the pod plant height 
position of the flower and flower color. In total, Mendel included in his experiments seven different characters, fourteen different traits, fourteen different traits. Now we'll be focusing. We'll be focusing on plant height here in your mono hybrid cross. and in the dye hybrid cross along with the plant height we'll also be including other other characters such as shape of the seed and color of the seed in the case of dye hybrid cross so in mono hybrid cross we will be studying plant height in dye hybrid cross we'll be studying shape of the seed as well as color of the seed can we start now mono hybrid cross can we start mono hybrid cross tell me in the chat can we start mono hybrid cross now now what is the meaning of mono the meaning of mono here means one mono means one hybrid means cross mono hybrid cross is a cross mono hybrid cross is a cross where a single character is taken into consideration a single character is taken into consideration that is mating that is polyne fertilization of individuals with homozygous genotypes remember this in the case of mono hybrid cross only and only we use homozygous genotypes differing in only one character this is very important very important line in the case of your mono hybrid cross there is always only one character is involved now in the students in the examination they will not tell you if this is a mono hybrid cross if this is a di hybrid cross they will just give an they'll just give you the question and from the question you should be able to identify if it is a mono hybrid if it is a di hybrid how do you do that read the question if there is only one character it is a mono hybrid if there are two characters it is a di hybrid cross clear now can we start mono hybrid yes sir we can start the mono hybrid cross now let's take the example which is given in your ncrt the example which is given in your ncrt is plant height plant height is given as plant height in plant height we have two different parents here one parent is extremely tall ability ability one parent is extremely dwarf can you see one parent is extremely tall one parent is extremely dwarf and in the case here we represent tallness as a capital t so capital t is dominant and capital t is giving you tall plants so this capital t capital t is the parents is the parents that is capital t capital t gives a tall plant small t small t gives a dwarf or a short plant or a short plant and remember both of these capital t capital t small t small t both the conditions are homozygous in nature now we obtain the gametes obtain the gametes here capital t is a gamete and we have the small t as a gamete gametes then what happens when is the crossing then we have the crossing when these two cross we obtain capital t and small t now one question should come in all of your mind why am i writing capital t front the reason i'm writing capital t in the front is because the dominant character is always written on the front that is capital t letter is always written in the front key clear now tell me in the chat quickly if this is going to be a tall plant or is it going to be a dwarf plant the answer is very simple this capital t small t is going to be a tall plant is going to be a tall plant why because capital t represents tallness and this is a dominant allele hence the phenotype will be tall hence let's take this particular one here capital t yes and small t then this one is written here capital t and small t now when these two cross we get capital t capital t when these two cross we get capital t small t capital t small t and small t small t now you tell me in the chat right now 
first product the first offspring the first offspring is capital T capital T is this plant tall or is this plant dwarf tell me right now this plant right here is a tall plant why because both the alleles are what both the alleles are dominant allele so tall plant the next one is capital T small t capital T small t this also is going to be tall plant why because capital T is dominant allele then we have capital T small t again that is again tall plant then we also have last one is small t small t now the small t small t is completely recessive in nature so this plant will be dwarf now will be dwarf now the question will come from the question will come from the concept that is phenotype and genotypic ratio now in the case of your mono hybrid cross this is a mono hybrid cross mono hybrid cross in the case of mono hybrid cross the phenotypic ratio the phenotypic ratio here is what 1 2 3 3 are tall is 2 and only 1 is dwarf so the phenotypic ratio the phenotypic ratio in the case of a mono hybrid cross is 3 is to 1 3 is to 1 that is 3 if you look at a plant if you look at the plant from your eyes without looking at the genes we get a 3 is to 1 3 are tall 1 is dwarf 1 is dwarf now what about genotype what about genotype genotype is very simple look at the genes we have one is homozygous dominant can you see this is homozygous yes this is homozygous dominant one what about these two these two are homozygous or heterozygous these two right here are heterozygous right two different alleles look different so these are heterozygous dominant two is two what about this is this homozygous or heterozygous this right here is homozygous but is this dominant or recessive this right here is recessive so this is homozygous recessive 1 is 2 2 is to 1 is the genotypic ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1 is the genotypic ratio clear now students you are understanding concept here now later on in the exam hall in the examination they will give you a question what is the percentage of what is the percentage of capital T small t here? What is the percentage of capital T small t? They can ask you a question like that. If you consider this as a 100%, each one is a 25%. So percentage of capital T small t is 50%. Clear? Or the question can ask. The question can be asked as what is the percentage of homozygous dominant? The percentage of homozygous dominant here is just 25 25% is homozygous dominant that's how the question will be asked they will not ask you direct questions like this they will ask you percentage and they will give you a tricky way to make this entire mono hybrid cross clear 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 all of you now they can also ask you what is the percentage of homozygous recessive again homozygous recessive is 25 percent clear they can ask you percentage wise questions also and let me know in the chat let me know in the chat right now if you want to solve last five year previous year questions from this chapter yes that's what i want to ask you if you want me to solve last five year previous year question let me know in the comment section i will make sure i discuss the last 10 years not five years previous year question all type of possible questions from this chapter we will solve all the questions any type of percentage question any type of mono hybrid question any type of dihybrid question we will solve on this channel ok but i want to see some uh, you know response so don't tell me right now let me know in the comment section in today's video if you want previous year questions on this chapter ok this is your homo uh, see this genotypic ratio and phenotypic ratio now what do we understand now this is where the laws come in what do we understand from mono hybrid cross now from the mono hybrid cross only only from mono hybrid cross 
only from mono hybrid cross we obtain two different laws so if a question comes to you if you get a question examination what are the two different laws which we obtain from mono hybrid cross the laws which we obtain from mono hybrid cross is law of dominance as well as law of segregation as well as law of segregation so the two laws which we obtain from mono hybrid is law of dominance as well as law of segregation now we'll understand each one of them very easy can we start now based on the results of mono hybrid cross mendel proposed two laws that is mono hybrid that is law of dominance as well as law of segregation now what is law of dominance according to the law of dominance when we have two different alleles when we have two different alleles one allele is always dominant the other allele is recessive but is that case in the case of homozygous no only when we have heterozygous condition see here out of a pair of contrasting characters when we say contrasting characters when i mean see capital t is for tall that is one character one trait and small t is pre also present here that is also a small other trait so when we have in a heterozygous condition in a heterozygous condition one allele is always dominant the other allele is always recessive that is called as law of dominance out of a pair of contrasting characters only one is able to express so there are two contrasting traits it should be traits that is out of the two contrasting traits that is one is tall one is dwarf out of the two contrasting traits only one trait is able to express itself the trait which is getting expressed is called as dominant trait clear clear amazing that is called as law of dominance the one that is expressed is dominant the other one is unexpressed that is called as recessive that is called as recessive the one which is expressed is called as dominant the one which is showing off all the time the one which is always showing off one who is always speaking is called as dominant the other one which is not able to express is called as recessive that is law of dominance any doubt you can ask me right now students any doubt here law of dominance clear to all of you pre board tomorrow english go study english then <laughs> start studying english so tomorrow i have science pre board that's amazing you will score out of 14 in you know, this heredity chapter and if you have tarun if you have not watched reproduction you can go watch reproduction every single point from your ncert is covered in the reproduction chapter also okay now let's understand law of segregation now can we start segregation now students the meaning of segregation the meaning of segregation means in english to separate what is the meaning of segregation the meaning of segregation is to separate now listen to me very carefully the two members of a pair of factors right there are two factors now what are these factors factors are nothing but alleles here when the two members of a pair of alleles separate during the formation of gamete so the two alleles the two alleles separate during the gamete formation that is factors do not blend that is the two alleles for example capital t small t these two separate alleles the two contrasting alleles one responsible for tallness one responsible for dwarfness they do not mix they do not mix that is factors do not blend but separate into different gametes they separate into different gametes listen to me very carefully now see this this is the parent this is the parent right containing two types of alleles it contains two type of alleles during the gamete formation during the gamete formation each contain only one type of alleles that is from a parent gene from a parent gene the two different alleles do not mix but they separate out the two alleles separate out during the gamete formation that is called as law of segregation a gamete would contain only one version of a character it will have only it should be trait trait only one version of the trait that is this will have 
trait for tallness this will have trait for trait for short height trait for short height that is called of segregation what is the meaning of segregate the english word for segregate is separate out so during the gamete formation the two alleles will separate out when during the gamete formation why am i telling gamete formation so much because a question has come previously early when does the separation happen the separation happen during the gamete formation the two alleles do not blend clear the two alleles do not blend clear now question can you solve the question ashutosh this is a channel exclusively for english audience exclusive for english audience we have vidhan to 9th and 10th where teachers teach in hindi complete hindi and english but this is a channel which is only for english for some, for all the students who wants to learn only in english and the main reason is because i can't talk hindi properly okay the genotypic ratio in f2 generation of mono hybrid cross will be tell me right now what will be the mono hybrid cross in mono hybrid cross what will be the ratio of genotype that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 the mendel conducted his famous breeding experiment by working on hmm tell me first that is pisum sativum also called as pea plant also called as pea plant next question the mendelian mono hybrid phenotypic ratio what is the phenotypic ratio phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1 simple 3 is tall 1 is dwarf yes now mendel's principle of segregation mendel principle of segregation is based on separation of alleles during when does the allele separate out the alleles will completely separate out during the gamete formation during the gamete formation the two different alleles will separate out the two different alleles do not fuse the two alleles do not fuse the two alleles separate out that is called as law of segregation segregation so students if you are able to understand the concepts if you are able to enjoy the concepts i want every one of you to watch the video right now to subscribe to the channel and also like the video okay clear now what is a test cross what is a test cross how many of you know what is a test cross how many of you heard what is a test cross test cross is nothing but a cross between an individual of unknown genotype and a recessive parent that is a test cross what is a test cross test cross is a cross between an unknown genotype crossing with with the recessive parent but what is a back cross what is a back cross back as in backing is going back that is a cross between a parent from f1 generation a cross between parent from f1 generation of any of the parents is called as back cross so f1 crossing with any of the parent is called as back cross for example can you see this is the f1 we are crossing with dominant parents f1 crossing with the recessive parents that is called as a back cross now can we start with dihybrid cross now can we start can we start with the dihybrid cross now so the some of you do not know me how many of you know me if you students you do not know me i am a teacher at vedantu i teach mainly on the vedantu neat english channel i take classes for neat students from couple of years from 2 3 years i am taking for neat students that is i teach for neat students mainly botany because my masters degree is in botany post graduation is in botany okay can we start because some of you are new here right all of you new audience we need to know me who i am right so my name is baswaraj i am i am been teaching on vedantu for neat category recently i started teaching for 9th and 10th because i got to you know 9th and 10th foundation is not you know left there there so i started teaching for 9th and 10th also okay now let's start dihybrid cross let's start dihybrid cross remember in mono hybrid cross in the case of mono hybrid cross there were a single character yes all of you agree with me now here the meaning of die the meaning of die is to 
in the case of dihybrid cross there are involvement of two different characters how many characters in the case of dihybrid cross there are two different characters okay, test cross see in the case of test cross that is an unknown see students they will not ask you to solve the test cross so in the case of test cross see what is the test when you write test you need to there are they are finding out what you know just like if you want to find what is the unknown genotype you do a test cross that is you take a unknown genotype you take a unknown genotype can you see unknown genotype and cross it with in recessive parent cross is with recessive parent that's all there are, see in your syllabus that is nothing is there right now when you go to your class class uh, 12th principles of inheritance of variation in your class 12th you will be learning the entire detailed okay clear now i was telling you in the case of your dihybrid cross in the case of dihybrid cross there are involvement of two different characters for example the first character the first character here is shape of the seed the first character here is shape of the seed yes shape of seed is the first character shape of seed the second character here is color of the seed color of seed is a second character that is in the case of dihybrid so a dihybrid cross is the cross in which is carried out by taking two pairs of contrasting characters at a time so we take two different contrasting characters mendel chose seed color and seed shape two characters for his experiment now listen to me very carefully in the case of your seed shape the round is always dominant in the case of seed shape round is dominant wrinkled is recessive wrinkled is recessive in the case of seed color yellow is dominant and green is recessive now this information is very important if you want to understand the cross here all of you please write this down please write this down because now we will be doing the entire cross of your dihybrid cross okay this is the round is dominant wrinkled is recessive yellow is dominant green is always recessive okay clear now we are crossing now we will take a seed we will take one seed we will take one seed which is round and yellow yes one seed here is round and yellow both the dominant characters are here both dominant characters are here that is capital r capital r capital y capital y both the dominant characters are present in one seed both the recessive characters are present in another seed now what are the two dominant characters here the two dominant characters here are round shape and yellow color both are dominant and similarly we have wrinkled wrinkled which is a recessive shape and also green color and green is a recessive color here both together then we have a then we get the gametes we have get the gametes capital r capital y small r small y when we do a cross when we do a cross we obtain what do we do capital r is dominant so always first then we write small r then we write capital y then we write this small y this is what we get in the f1 that is i told you r is dominant so shape will be f1 will be round y is dominant here so this will not sub, this is not expressed at all so yellow so round and yellow is obtained in the f1 progeny so what is obtained in f1 in the case of f1 we have capital r small r capital y small y these are the gametes when they fuse we obtained f1 progeny clear if there is any doubt in this point here ask me right now before i go to the next part any doubt here if there is no doubt now we will do self crossing now we'll do self crossing of f1 ready now this is your f1 this is your f1 let me write here 
एफ वन कैपिटल आर स्मॉल आर कैपिटल वाई स्मॉल वाई दिस इज यू एफ वन यस सर दिस इज दफ वन नाउ आई टेल यू ट्रिक टू फॉर्म द गैमेट्स अ स्मॉल ट्रिक टू राइट द गैमेट्स हियर स्मॉल ट्रिक ओके हाउ डू ओपन द गैमेट्स हियर फर्स्ट वी क्रॉस दिस लेट मी राइट समेर एल्स लेट मी राइट इट दिस साइड कैपिटल आर स्मॉल आर कैपिटल वाई and small y how do you form the gametes first we multiply with this that is we get capital r and capital y first gamete then capital r with small y that is second gamete is capital r and small y that is the second gamete then we multiply small r with capital y small r with capital y that is your third gamete then we multiply small r with small y small r with small y that's how we obtain the four different gametes when we cross before crossing the f1 before crossing the f1 the way we obtain the four different gametes is capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y small r small y so this to this this to this small to this this to this that's how we obtain the gametes that's how we obtain the gametes and remember when we are crossing f1 obviously there has to be two selfing of f1 two different yes two different parents two different parents now unlike your mono hybrid cross in mono hybrid cross the punnett square was very easy yes very easy now if you want to understand the punnett square of your di hybrid cross If you want to understand the Punnett square of your dihybrid cross, please write down with me. Let me write the gametes here first. What are the gametes? The gametes which obtained was capital R, capital Y. The gametes were what? The gametes were your this to this, this to this, capital R, capital Y, capital R, small Y, small R, capital Y, and small R. small y these were the different gametes now let's draw the punnett square let's draw the punnett square female take it female and male so you write down here capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y and small r and small y write down again here also capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y and finally small r and small y now did all of you write down this did all of you write down this now we will do crossing now we will do crossing which color say purple now what do we get here capital r from here here also capital r capital y capital y yes now what do we get here capital r capital r capital y will come first because this is dominant and small y from here now from here capital r small r capital y and capital y now capital r small r from here capital y from here and small y from here now next row what do we have capital r both the sides capital r capital y from here and small y from here here what do we have both are capital r one both are small y what do we have here capital r small r capital y and small y from here from here capital r small r both are small y small y now here capital r smaller from here both are capital y then what do we have capital r small r capital y and small y remember every single place i am writing a dominant one dominant always come first dominant always will come first okay then what do we have next one is both are small small capital y capital capital r capital capital y capital y 
both are dominant. Okay. Next, we have small r, small r. Then capital Y, small y. Last one, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Here, what do we have? Capital R, small r, small y, small y, small y, small y. Now here, small r, small r, capital Y, and from here, small y. Finally, what do we have? Small r, small r, small y, small y. Let me draw some lines here so all of you can easily tell which is apart. Okay, mm, black line. If we can want to distribute this. All of you should write down like this in your books. This is what you obtain when you do the complete dihybrid cross. Now let's write down the few points here about dihybrid cross. For example, for example here, red and I'll take maroon. Okay, I'll take red only. No, not red. I'll take um, purple. Now, what about this? This seed, capital R, capital R is there. Will the seed be round or it will be wrinkled? So, capital R is dominant. So, this will be a round seed. This will be a round seed. Round seed. But, and we have capital Y, capital Y. Yes, we have capital Y and capital Y. Means the seed color will be yellow or green. Capital is there. So, it will be yellow is dominant. So, round and yellow. So let's write a star mark for round and yellow. A star mark for round and yellow. Now, what about this? Capital R, capital R. This will be round. Capital Y, small y. Small will be recessive. Capital Y is dominant. So yellow will be more expressive. So this will be again round and yellow. Then what do we have? Capital R and capital Y. Both are present. So star shape, round and yellow. Capital R, capital Y is present. Star shape, round and yellow. Capital R, capital Y. Again, round and yellow. But here, now here you see. In this case, we have round. Yes, seed shape is round. But we only have small y, small y. Yes, we only have small y and small y. So if it is small y, will it be yellow color or green color? Capital Y, capital y is yellow. Small y is green color. So we have a new category now. The new category here is the new category is nothing but your round and green. Round and green. So can I can I write a circle here for this? Yes, let's draw a circle for round and green. Yes, circle sir. Next one. Can we see next one? Round and again capital R Capital Y, that will be what? Round and yellow again. Round and yellow. Now what about this? Capital R is there. It is round. But small y is there. It will be what? Green color. It will be green color in nature. Round and green. Now what about the next one? Next one you see here. Capital R is there. Round. Capital Y is there. Yellow. So star again you write. Capital R, capital Y, star shape. Now you see this very important now. Very, very important. Small r and small r. If small r and small r is present, will the seed be round or wrinkled? Capital R is for round. But small r is for recessive. So this will be what? This will be a new category that is small r, small r is wrinkled. Is wrinkled. And capital, capital is your what? Capital Y, capital Y. Capital Y is your yellow. So it's wrinkled and yellow now. So can we draw tri triangle here for this? Yes. Let's draw triangle for this. Triangle for this. Now what about this? Again, smaller, smaller. The meaning of smaller, smaller here is nothing but it is green. It is in yellow color. It is yellow color and it is round. Yellow color and round. 
No, no, sorry. Wrinkled. It is wrinkled. Oh, yar. It is wrinkled because it is smaller, smaller. It is wrinkled. But capital Y because it is yellow. So it is wrinkled and yellow. Now, what about this one? This one again is capital R, capital Y. So round and yellow. Round and yellow. Now, what about this? This is round. R is round. But small y, small y. So this is round and green. It is round and green again. Round and green. So circle. What about the next one? Here, smaller, smaller. If smaller, smaller is present, it is going to be, obviously it's going to be not round, it will be wrinkled. So this is wrinkled and capital Y, y is there. It will be yellow. So wrinkled and yellow triangle. Now what about the last one? The last one is very peculiar. It is smaller, smaller. It means it is wrinkled. Small by small by. Means it is green in color. It is green color. See if it is capital, it's yellow. So this will be, let's take one uh, square. Square for this. What is this? The last one is wrinkled. Wrinkled because it is smaller, smaller. And it is also green. Why, is, why it is green? Because it is small y, small y. It is a recessive trait. It is a recessive trait for color of the seed. Now let's count. Let's count how many are there. Let's count. How many round yellow is there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. 9. How many round green is there? 1, 2, 3, 3. How many yellow wrinkled is there? 1, 2 and 3. How many wrinkled green is there? Only 1. So in the case of your dihybrid cross, in the case of your dihybrid cross, in the case of the dihybrid cross, the phenotypic ratio, the phenotypic ratio will be what? In the case of dihybrid cross, the phenotype will be 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. That is, the 9 will be round and yellow, 3 will be round and green, 3 will be wrinkled and yellow, 1 will be wrinkled and green. 1 will be wrinkled and green. This is the entire thing. This is the entire way you, you write the dihybrid cross. Clear? Any doubt in this paragraph, in this slide? If you have any doubt in this slide, let me know in the comment section. I will clear your doubt personally. Okay? Dihybrid cross. Clear? What about the genotypic ratio? Genotypic ratio is not in a syllabus. That is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1. This is not in a syllabus. Not in a syllabus. You don't have to worry about it. Clear? Clear? See, this is what we obtained. 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. That is phenotypic ratio. Let's solve a question. A phenotypic ratio of dihybrid cross in F2 generation will be what? 9 is to 3 is to 1. Genotypic ratio not, will not be asked, but just for convenience, I am teaching you 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now, based on, based on the dihybrid cross, see based on monohybrid, we learnt about two different laws. Based on monohybrid, we learnt of law of dominance, law of segregation. But based on the dihybrid cross, there is one law, that is law of independent assortment. Law of independent assortment. Now, what is law of independent assortment? Based upon the observation on dihybrid cross, Mendel proposed the law of independent assortment. When there are two pairs of contrasting characters, Yes, in the case of dihybrid cross, we had a pair of contrasting characters. Yes, we had the distribution of members of one pair. That is, distribution of members of one pair. We had capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. In this particular thing, distribution of one pair, distribution of one pair into gametes, distribution of one pair into gametes, is independent of distribution of other. So basically telling you, in the gamete formation, even if there are two different characters, 
the two different characters will not be mixing they will separate out properly in the gamete formation they will separate out properly in the gamete formation because we know when there are one pair and two gametes that is distribution of one members of members of one pair that is distribution of round distribution of color of the seed distribution of shape of the seed distribution of shape of the seed distribution of color of the seed will separate out individually that is independently they will separate out independently they are assorted the two characters will separate out properly clear that is members of one pair members of one pair of that is distribution of members of one pair distribution of members of one pair into gametes distribution of one pair into gametes is independent of distribution of other that is they are assorting independently they are assorting independently ask me doubt right now if you have an independent assortment that is when two pairs of traits of combined in a hybrid the segregation of one pair of characters segregation of one pair of characters can you see here segregation of one pair of characters is independent of other pair of character that is segregation of the color of the seed is independent of segregation of separation of shape of the seed color of the seed and shape of the seed will completely separate out during the gamete formation that is called as your independent assortment clear clear hybrid segregation of one pair of characters one pair of character is independent of other pair of character that is segregation of alleles of seed shape that is small capital r small r and rr is in happening independent of segregation of alleles for seed color they are separating out separately thus there are four genotypes that is why that is why in the case of your dihybrid cross thus there are four genotype genotypes of gametes that is four types of pollen and four types of egg the four types are capital r y each with a frequency of 25% that is during the gamete formation all the different two different characters are segregating you know independently assorted so let's go ask a question variation in species become possible due to variation the reason we see variation is because of the independent assortment that is if there was no independent assortment would we see so many different gametes would we see so many different gametes no we would not see so many different gametes hence because of independent assortment that is two pairs of traits are combined in hybrid segregation of one pair of character that is one pair of character that is shape of the seed it can be round or wrinkled is independent of the color of the seed next question the pre principles of mendel's are what law of dominance law of segregation as well as law of independent assortment there are certain exceptions there are certain exceptions to mendel mendel uh, mendelian that is not given in ncrt but i'm just mentioning you independent dominance co dominance polygenic inheritance pleiotropy all of these do not follow the mendel all of them do not follow the mendel there's one more topic which i have to teach you is sex determination is sex determination in the case of sex determination what happens listen to me very carefully in sex determination last part of the chapter in sex determination we have in from the male then we have female in the case of male we have the male gamete that is the sperm the sperm will have sperm can either be x chromosome or the sperm can be a y chromosome a sperm can have only an x chromosome or only a y chromosome but in the case of female the egg the egg will always be a the egg will always be a x chromosome it will always be it will always have a x chromosome when the male containing x chromosome fuses with the egg it produces xx and this resultant child or the fetus or the baby will be a female 
What about the male sperm that is Y sperm meets with the X egg that is XY. This will result in a male child. Male child. That is the sex determination. That is the sex determination. Clear? That is the end of the chapter. That is the end of the chapter. And I will see you in the next class. Next, right now you will have maths class. Attend the maths class. And let me know in the comment section how was today's class. And also, let me know in the comment section if you want previous year questions based on today's chapter. Let me know in the chat if you want questions based on today's chapter. We will be doing it tomorrow. What say? If you want questions, previous year questions on this chapter, let me know in the comment section. We will be doing, doing it tomorrow on the channel live. Live will be doing at least 20 questions or 10 questions from this particular chapter. Until then, see you next time. Take care all of you.